But Moshe understood everything, all the concepts. As the Gemara says, the entire Torah, every single word that would ever be spoken in any generation was given to Moshe Bainu. He understood everything. But he was understanding it all on a much more, much more supernal level, a much higher level of Matthias and understanding, long before it came down to the actual physical reality that we have today. And a similar concept we find by generations, say Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, the authors of the Mishnah versus us today. Look at all the Torah that has been written and explained in concepts and Chidushi Torah constantly coming out, new novel ideas to explain ideas that are that based upon the Mishnah it was written you know, over a thousand years ago. And people ask the question, did Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, who never spoke about these things before, did he not know these things? And therefore, we're mechadish them, because every generation is learning and becoming smarter? Or is it more like Yerida Sadaris, where our, we need to define things and spell things out in a more specific way in order to be able to connect and relate to them than the generation of Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, who was one with the concept? They didn't have to articulate it and always come up with examples because they were living that reality. It was more real to them. They were more one with it. The further you go back to Sinai, the more real the experience of Torah begins or becomes uh, for every individual. But as the, as the generations move on, and you have Yudas Adoras, the generations get becoming spiritually weaker each and every generation. So in some respect, there's more of a gilu, but that's because they need it. To be able to connect to the spiritual world, we need all these physical and, and spiritual examples to help understand that which is in Torah, which the previous generations automatically understood because their spiritual being was on a higher level to begin with. So, that's the distinction. So he's saying over here, right? <laughs> so therefore, Moshe Benu's Hasaga of these things was more hidden because it was less defined, but it didn't have to be defined because he was one with it. When you become one with something, it becomes part of your consciousness, and you can feel the reality of the idea, without having to define it, you don't have to define it. You only have to spell things out for people who don't understand what you're talking about. The same, for example, you talk to children, and you say to a child who's not so, not so, you know, not so old yet, and therefore not so clever, and you say, you know, you give over instructions and say, that you understand what that means? And you figure they must because you understand what that means. And they say, no, what does that mean? I lost you where you began. This is what I want you to do. So you say, okay, well, let me explain in more detail. And after a while, they go, I, I kind of get it. Is it like this? Well, not exactly. So you give more detail and more protein. And that's what happened with Rabbi Kiva's generation. They were getting more of a gilu because more things were being spelled out so their eyes and their mind could actually see these things. But Moshe Benu was living on a much higher madrega, a much higher level. His feet walked the ground, but his mind and his heart were in Shemayim. And that's why he was Isha king, part man and part angel, because he was part of another reality. And the miracle of Moshe Benu and the gift of Moshe Benu was the fact that even though he did belong to another reality altogether, he was able to talk to us. He was able to communicate with us. He was able to act as the conduit and the go-between between Shemaim and us to give us the Torah that we can still you know, partake and, and benefit to this very day. It's all Torah's motion. In every generation, he's amongst us. Actually, literally, in every generation he's amongst us. But certainly through the Torah itself, he lives on. And he, part, he facilitates our connection. And therefore, as we close the Torah and we end the Torah, it's only fitting that we end with the eulogy of Moshe Rabbeinu. It's an amazing thing. The entire Torah comes down to this eulogy of Moshe Rabbeinu and what he's able to accomplish. Because Kodesh Baruch Hu is saying that had it not been for Moshe Rabbeinu and his hasaga and his ability to come to Shemayim, without physically going anywhere necessarily. I mean, he climbed the mountain. But it's a, it's a function of consciousness, as Tosis points out in Chagiga. It's a, it's a function of, of, of reaching higher levels of consciousness. And Moshe was able to do that and to act as the go-between, as the MCE, as intermediary, to bring Torah from Shemaim down to us in a way that we can connect and relate to it. So when you're dancing with the Torah and Simcha's Torah, you have to have that in mind. Not just to be grateful 
for the Torah that you have and that you learn and that you live by and the schuyot that it gives you on a momentary daily basis, but that there was a Moshe Rabbeinu who had a phenomenal koyach and energy and ability. A lot of it God given, a lot of it the serious nephew worked on himself over the years. That he was able to act as that intermediary to give his Torah, Zoysa Bracha, that's the blessing. That's the blessing that led to the blessing of this week's Parsha of the entire Torah, Zoysa Bracha, in the end. We celebrate by dancing to the Sefer Torah, we dance with Moshe Beinu as well. Should be a, a Chag Sameach, Bazar Hashem, first a Gemar Tov, Gemar Chesibatova, a good Yom Kippur, that we should celebrate Bazar Hashem, which I think we'll have at the Shirni how to discuss this idea with some time in building the Sukkah and all that. But uh, going into the new year, Bazar Hashem, we should be Zoycha to Mikabal Torah, to Liv Torah, to Dance of Torah, to the Simcha of Torah, and Simcha of Mitzvahs, so that we, through our lives and our living, can give Simcha to Gush Baruch Hu as well.